So I had pretty good response out of the how I stop planer snipe video. But as always, you have the ones, you know. So those I had this mounted in that table to where it had a long in feed and a long out feed, and that's what they insisted was making it not snipe. When in reality it's these pieces that I make to go in there. Now I've cut these boards, they're right at three quarter, but I want to clean them up. So I'm gonna make them 11 sixteenths. These are three quarter. So I'm gonna make two more at 11 sixteenths because I don't know in the process of cleaning up the shop where all those went, I think they all got thrown out. So I'll make another set. These, I'll drill a hole in and hang them on the wall or I'll put a bracket on the wall to hang them on or eventually I'll put this back in the table and I'll just throw these in the drawer or in the cabinet underneath it. Every planer is a little bit different. What I do with mine, um, I cut these things at 15 and 3 quarter. They are right at 3 inches wide. No, two and a half inches wide, sorry. They're two and a half inches wide. I'm going to cut them down to where they're 15 and a half inches long. Then I'll cut out my steps in there on the bandsaw. When I pop them in there and I drop that table down, it won't be able to rock. Since it can't rock, it can't snipe. To better understand, and I don't know how well the camera will pick this up, but if I stick this board in here and I lift up on this end of it, I don't know whether you can see that or not, but the planer actually rocked forward. And it would do the same thing if I came in on the other end and picked up on it. If you listen, it moved. So what's happening is when the board goes in and hits that first roller, you, you're shoving your board in, it hits that first roller right here. When it hits that first roller right here, this whole head uh, that this whole drive unit right here tilts forward. When it tilts forward, it shoves the knives down in here until the board goes through enough to hit that back roller to level it back out. That is what causes the snipe. Same thing when it's exiting out this side. It drops off this back roller, it tilts. The knives dig in and then it comes out. That's why you end up with snipe going in and snipe going out. I'm going to cut these down to the 11 sixteenths, make them to put them in here. I've purposely taken the tables off of this. There's no in feed, no out feed table. I'm going to put these on there and I'm going to run these boards through there and I'm going to show you there will be no snipe. Now to answer the how I make them, this is already cut in. I go in with a mark. This particular one is going to be 11 sixteenths. I stop right there, shut the saw off, and I come over to my fence, I raise the block up just a little bit so that the dust can get underneath it, and I clamp it down. Now I just take my piece and I flip it over, and I have my fence set to the proper distance. And again, I can't tell you what that distance is because I don't know what yours is. You have to have enough sticking out and I'll explain all that in a minute. You have to have, I guess I'll explain it now. You have to have this big shoulder. It doesn't have to be quite that wide. I did that just so that it doesn't break. This right here, this portion right here is on this particular one, three quarters of an inch from the bottom to right here. This is what I'm gonna set the planer head down on create this shoulder right here so that it can't get sucked in or shot back out at you. I've had people tell me well they can do the same thing by using a three-quarter inch block putting it on all four corners and, and shutting it down. Well if you shove the piece in there now when you use these you have to get relatively close. I will shove my pieces in until my snipe is just a little bit bigger than whatever my final is going to be. But if you are using this and you shove a piece, say this is three quarter, if you shove a piece in there that's seven eighths, it's still gonna lift up the head. 
And if you're using blocks in there and you shove a 7 8 piece in there and it lifts it up, guess what? These blocks are going to bobble around in there. And I've already had a set of blocks get caught up in there and come flying back out at me in little pieces, messed up my blades, and messed up my router, or my, excuse me, my planer. So I recommend that you put these shoulders on here. If you don't want to, that's on you, but this is my design. This is the way I do it. I make this shoulder so that it hits the front, hits the back, and this is my distance I want my final product to be. So that's what we've done here. We figured out what the distance is that I want those pieces to be, set the fence, shoved it in to the 7 16th or the 11 16th mark right here. Flip the board over, do it again, do the other one, both sides. Now we have to do the part that the planer's going to sit on, right here. And I usually make mine about three quarters of an inch wide. So we're going to move the fence over three quarters of an inch, and we're going to go down to this next line. Get your pattern drawn out on one, you can pretty much duplicate everything from there. You just have to pay attention to what's going on with yours piece that joins the two sides together right here you need to make sure that when you set the head of the planer down on these shelves right here that none of this right here will come in contact with the rollers or the knives you don't want it digging into it that's why this is so thin right here all it's doing is keeping these two together to make it easier to set up and go and I don't have to worry about one getting sucked in all right now that I cut those out right there what I went ahead and did was I freehanded and I came in and I cut down and got straight with my line right here. Now I can take this and put this in here. Backwards that is. Bring my fence over to that. Lock it down. And then I can go the other opposite direction until I get to my cut point. Okay, now that I've done that part, these don't have to be, this is not rocket science, these don't have to be perfect down in here. The only part that has to be perfect is this little shelf right here. So what I do now is I come in here, I put my piece in, And I make sure that my fence from the back side of the blade, the side of the blade towards the fence, from my fence to that blade, that I am exactly 11 sixteenths when I lock this down. Here I get one quick shot of this. Now what I have, I'm perfect right here. I'm perfect right there. Those are the only two places that you have to be concerned with. You just have to make sure that this piece is down low enough that rollers and the blades can't get it and these have to be perfect if they're not then you're all out of whack that's the only part that has to be perfect is right here and right here okay now that we have our pieces made it's as simple as lay them flat slide them in and turn them up I put mine in here on the table and not over here on this outside for two reasons Number one, these are inconsistent on all four sides. Number two, there's all kinds of weird crap going on underneath there and it's hard to make a piece to do that. Now, if you're trying to do, this one's 13 and a half inches. If I was trying to cut something, plain something 13 and a half inches, of course I couldn't do this. But chances are, most of the time, you're not. And this little extra inch and a half out of using three quarter isn't gonna make a difference. Slide them in, stick them over. Now see, I have a little bit of playroom in there, but at no time can it come out, and at no time can the planer itself drop off of my shelf back there from either side. So I just simply put those over onto the two sides. Crank it down, kind of give it a little snug. My pieces are all tight. See that one's a little bit loose, just snug up just a little bit more. Now see that that is the difference in right there. That is the difference in the rock in this thing. But that's not going to matter. My front side up there is really tight. This side is really tight all the way around. 
It's just the imperfection in how this thing works. That right there doesn't matter. It's not going to fall over. It can't fall over. No snipe. None. Now when I pulled it out, I did kind of pick up on it a little bit, which if you see right here, you see a little bit of a line right there. But if you look in the side, you see no planar snipe. There is none. There's very, very little. That happened because I picked the board up. That wasn't this fault. But usually going in is where you get the biggest snipe. And there is none. No snipe. I don't care if you've got a 20 foot table inside and outside on this thing or no table inside and outside on this thing. The problem is the head rocks and this just proves it. Now this one here I'm gonna try not to let it let it sag so much. You know it does help. I'm not say the table doesn't help. The table does help but the table's not what's stopping the snipe. That, that's my point. Yes, the table does help support the piece and it will aid in sniping when it comes out if you're not careful. But that, that's not really the problem. The problem is the head of this thing rocking. So let's run this one through. Let's show you again. Nothing on this from where the saw hit it. All the way down. Now if you see what happened there, this piece was just a little too thick to be running through there. It should have been run through on a pass of its own. But what did I do? I run it through. I let it snipe it. I should have showed you that. But now, I mean this is just my blades not being sharp. It's going to be all the way down it. See, even on the exit. No snipe. None. So I can't, I can't demonstrate it any clearer than that. I don't care if you've got a 30 foot in feed and out feed table. That is not what's causing your snipe. And it doesn't matter if you have no table. It's not what's causing your snipe. What's causing your snipe is that head to rock. This eliminates it.